Best Podcast Ever is brought to you by the Gertzberg Law Firm, a full-service business and litigation firm in Cleveland, Ohio. Practical and results-driven, the award-winning attorneys at Gertzberg Law have both in-house corporate and large firm backgrounds and have built a -a one-of-a-kind firm that is changing the way clients engage, work with, and pay for their attorneys. Visit GertzbergLaw.com to learn how we're different. Gertzberg Law Firm. We solve problems. Enjoy the show. Ladies and gentlemen, you're about to listen to the best podcast ever recorded. Hi, Molly Gebler. Hi, Alex Gertzberg. How's it going? Good. How are you? I'm good. Yeah? Yeah. Um, What's going on? Who were you texting just now? Um, I'm texting the owner of Sugar Me Dessertery because they... Um, came to the chamber today and said that they had an opening, and I believe I've gotten them the perfect person. Is it called a dessertery? It is a dessertery. I don't know. That's the name. Sugar me dessertery. Is that what that third word in there? Mm-hmm. Dessertery. Mm-hmm. I Have you been? Else. Oh, I love it. Oh my god! Except that there's a lot of dairy in the in the, in the stuff. Well, in yeah, because it's home. Issues. I mean, it's it's homemade from scratch stuff. So it is the bomb hit though. As, as far amazing. as dessert goes. Oh my gosh, can I recommend something? Please. The banana, um, it's a cake, but I have her make them into cupcakes. Because if I eat a whole bunch of cupcakes, it's so much better than eating a whole cake. You get what I'm saying? Is it, is it though? <laughs> it is in my mind. It's probably healthier Don't tell for me you. different. <laughs> um, and the um, maple cream cheese frosting. I can't even. I might have to go, or I might order it right now on my phone. Amazing. At your um, at the annual awards meeting at the movie yes. theater. Yes. Yes. Right? That that the chamber had. They had a a, a table out, and um, I did not leave that table. I just stood there. <laughs> I wasn't being social well, at all. I just kept eating Oscar. this stuff. She made Oscar. Did you see the Oscar yeah. cookies? Yeah. I mean, she's amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, they're they're good stuff. People should go eat there. Um, yes, it's hey Alex. Guess what? Tell it's me. my birthday week. When is your birthday? September third. I knew that actually. Mm-hmm. Uh, happy well, early I mean, birthday. we have been together now for how many years? You should know my birthday. You're, it's in my calendar. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't I don't do uh, well with birthdays. I forget well, them all the time. Well, I I just told you my favorite cupcake, so I'm assuming that will be delivered to my office sometime this week for my birthday weekend. I wasn't paying attention. It's a banana something. (laughs) I'm going to have to listen to this episode again. Oh, boy. A lot of things are making sense right now for me. Oh, my God. My memory's (laughs) god-awful. So uh, I thought of you this weekend because I saw the Emoji movie. Oh, you're sweet. Yeah, I saw the Emoji (laughs) movie, and I thought, you know who would love this because she only communicates in emojis is Molly. (laughs) But I communicate with bit emoji. That's different. I'd like to see a bit emoji um, movie come out. Those are better. I think there are references to that. It's actually, it was surprising. All all of the Gertzberg clan went. and Well, uh, you were a big, um, what was the other cartoon that you loved? No, um, that you had me watch, and I watched, and you... You loved it, but I can't remember what it was. Oh, it reminded you of like high school. It had all the music. Trolls. Trolls. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yes. Oh, that that's the yeah. best soundtrack of the that's year. So funny. That's the movie that's of the summer, right so there. So funny. Um, Gosh, I'm sure that. Uh, did you like? You liked it, Vin right? Vin Diesel's super happy that you're calling that the movie of the year. Uh, Trolls was awesome, and uh, and the emoji movie was. How funny, funny that you went to movie and I didn't watch any movies this week. That's you must odd. have been glued to the Netflix. That's is what I'm no, no, no. I was out and about. Good news, though. So, you know, my friend is on Riverdale, um, the show on the CW. I do know that. Uh, he's a local kid. Um, and he tweeted out about my pumpkin roll documentary. And my trailer hits went from, like, I think in three hours, went up 1,500 hits. Um, so that's a pretty cool can you cool thing. do you think that when that documentary goes super viral and you get like Netflix noticed, or HBO buys it which is my yeah. goal uh-huh. do you think that you're gonna quit your job and forget about all of us people and move to Hollywood and just <laughs> pour yourself out to the Hollywood well, you know I don't class? cry and I don't like the sun so Hollywood would not I'd move to New York 
Yeah. I've moved to New York. Uh, I've always been told that you don't get into documentaries to become rich. So <laughs> I don't think that. If I could just make the money for the T-shirts that we bought back, I'll well, be. I, I've been th- I was thinking about this, right? So I think the way this plays out is that um, you are going to make another documentary and it's going to be even better. And then you're going to make a third one. And then at some point you're going to go into other genres, right? And because... I think this is the kind of project that gets that has traction, right? Like y- you will have been bitten by the create. Cr- we have the subject bug. for the second one. Yeah. It's just a matter of will R forty three continue to love me to go on to a second one with me? I couldn't. I would. I couldn't and wouldn't want to do it without right. them. They're phenomenal. Right. They are phenomenal. They're 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 amazing. Yeah. So so if they want to do it again, yes. And we have we we've talked we've talked about a subject it's another yeah. local story um then i would do it again but um i'm just riding this one i'm riding this wave i mean i've been interviewed with the jewish daily news called me the other day you know because of my jewish right. background they were like oh wait you're a pap <laughs> from uh, hungary <laughs> and we're Curdy from right. ireland um the Scrim valley times is doing a great article on it um well, yeah, I think Lots that... Lots of great things coming with it. I think that um, <clears throat> when I think about events in my life that were repeated and that were big, bigger than I thought they would be the first time, and then the next time was way bigger, and the third time was like way bigger. Essay like the essay contest. contest, yeah. Contest, yes. um, but even other things, so just like in, in business and... Um, I don't know. Websites, blogs, whatever, right? Um, it's iterative. And... If you, especially with, with with something that's recorded, like the documentary, right? That you can watch and say, oh, next time I would do this this scene differently, right. or whatever, or th- I would I would put this back into the script, or whatever, right? Right, right. That is a snowball for sure. Right? Well, I mean, let's tell the listeners also that you are the official law firm of the documentary film festival. Or, uh, right. <laughs> no, no, but I better be. I should be at the documentary film festival. Um, you are the official law firm of the Pumpkin Roll documentary. Right. So, right. so you will definitely be for the trilogy. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> um, what did you do this weekend? Um, I went to Chicago. Um, and um, you know what I did over there? I Matt, don't actually, because I, I wasn't invited. There's a uh, there's a story. Did there. you go with Gene Makish? No. Did he go? Oh, he he has an apartment there. He lives. Oh I really? Mean, he, yeah. No. Okay. So here. So I went uh, because um, I am in this business owners group that meets in Chicago four times a year, and is um, that what you're calling it? Yeah. Right. <laughs> um, it is a legitimate business owners group, uh. but. Um, why, when I was there, you know who else was in Chicago? Who? Who's Bad, a Michael Jackson cover band. And they played oh, at the House of Blues, so I gosh. went there. They were awesome. Oh, that would have been my jam. Have you ever seen Who's Bad? No. Dude, it's... Can we get them in the triangle for next summer? I'm guessing I'll book no. them. They're, okay. they're pretty crazy. <laughs> I mean, it, first of all, there's dancers, right? Okay. They're really, really good. And they jam out some of the Michael Jackson songs in ways that I don't think he would have ever anticipated. Um, are you saying, like, I might have seen these dancers at, like, the um, the den? Are these those kind of dancers? No. The executive's oh. den? Yeah. No. <laughs> no. I mean, may, I, maybe as, as, as um, patrons. Okay. Right? Okay. No, they were all dudes. Oh, um, I see. Okay. Yeah. And it was just, it was, it was a good time. And then you know what I did the next day? I s- um, slapped because you were hungover. Yeah, uh, I saw Hamilton. Really? On Un- worth every penny. Un- totally unbelievable. Oh, every yeah. penny that makes me nervous. But we're gonna see that. That's on our series. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that's coming next yeah. next season. This, yeah. Yeah. Dude, it was awesome, and really? I've been yeah. Um, oh, I didn't know exciting. that you could make uh, a, an entire Broadway musical in rap, but you can. You can. And it's and you freaking. Saw it amazing oh that's exciting yeah. that's yeah. exciting so the next day so check this out so the next day i'm i'm bebopping down uh michigan avenue right and um t- i'm in an intersection and i bump into my cousin rima who lives in new york right oh my gosh. like in the morning like in all, and it was a busy ass saturday in chicago 
you know? How cool And is that? yeah, so then, so we had breakfast together. Anyway, that's what I did this weekend. I, I, went I watched Chicago. the fight. Yeah. I what did you think about that? You know what? I wasn't planning on it. Um, and then a friend of mine uh, rented the town hall and had it playing at the town hall. Right. Um, so I thought I would check it out. And of course, stupid me thought it started at nine. Well, that's when it was supposed to start. But well, they, they didn't come on all the midnight. other fights, yes, right. but not the main fight. Yeah. Um, I, you know what? I was actually intrigued. I, I was for the underdog for sure. Um, I didn't want the wife beater to win. Um, <laughs> alleged? Is he an alleged? Is he c- I for think sure? He, no, I think he's. Is he? He was. I think you're right. Yeah, for domestic violence. But I was really pressing for the. the Did other you watch guy. it in um, a bar? You don't listen to what I said. Did you just say? You? Did you just say where you where you where you watched it? You know, I think for the the listeners' sake, I'll let you listen to this and then find Come out on, where I watched where, it. Where did, Township Hall. You said Township Hall. Yeah. <laughs> you need to start drinking Dang, again. I know. <laughs> You're not. Focused. I put myself in timeout <laughs> after Chicago. <laughs> I know. You need to get some alcohol in you because you can't stay focused. Well, I mean. All right. Listen. So, um, I very listened. excited about our our, our guest. guest. Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah. His name is Greg Orloff, and he's sitting right next to us as we speak. Hi, Greg. Hi. How are you, Alex? Fantastic. Let's see. Uh, uh, Greg, I'm here too. Molly, I'm enchanted <laughs> to meet you. I've been looking forward to this for weeks. This is our first meeting, and he brought us. Fidget spinners. Fidget spinners. Yeah. My first fidget spinner, and I'm very. I'm. You're fidgety. I know. I got to keep it away because. No, use it. I know. I mean, like for this, because I'll be banging it into. I get in trouble all the time for <laughs> Nelly making noises. hearing me more noises. <laughs> so thank you for our our fidgeter. Yeah. You're most welcome. Yeah, and I thought he would be a perfect guest for the podcast. You know what? I met Greg already. You did. Greg, were you at Jekyll's when Alex talked? Yes. yes. Uh huh. I there met we Greg go. already. That's right. I did. I did. When you hosted the uh, when you hosted the meeting a couple yeah. months ago. Yeah. 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 Um, I thought you were going to have a much more illicit story. <laughs> Greg dated my girlfriend, and he was not cool. Yeah, it just came to me. Uh, came I'm glad that me. it was uh, more innocuous than than that. <laughs> Very simple. Um, that would have been some good drama for best podcast ever, though. That would have been good. That definitely would have made the top ten moments. Ooh. We need to do the top ten moments. Write Are that we? down. Top ten moments. Top ten I think moments we're, for what, best. What? I mean, we're on thirty something. This is we should have a top 30. ten. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Cut podcasts. it. We'll cut it. No pressure here, Greg, to make the top ten during this. <laughs> Interview. All right, all right, jacket's coming off. Here we right, go. I'm, but it's <laughs> we've had pooping on Broadway stages we have. That's already. A, that's so. getting in the top ten. Ooh, yeah. ouch. Yeah, you're gonna want to <laughs> listen to the uh, to the um, Rob Sap episode. Uh, Apologies, Rob. <laughs> yeah, no, it's a great story. Uh, um, it's a great pooping on a Broadway stage story. Legitimately. Legitimately yes. pooping your pants on a and Broadway stage. Wow. Um, yeah. So kids at home, go back and listen to, especially the last 15 minutes of the Rob Sapp episode. Yes, yes. But, you know, sometimes I uh, I get self-conscious about those earlier episodes because that was on the old equipment, and that was before we became the master questioners that we are today. Yes. Never be embarrassed of your past. I like that. It's, it's over. a good message. Yeah, it's, and it's part of the journey. That's what, now we're here. If we didn't have crappy stuff, we wouldn't know what we... That we needed new stuff. That's a great point, Molly. You're, you're welcome. Yeah. I won't charge you for that. That No, but that's a good... You know what? Let's come back to that. Let's come back to that, Greg, when we get to the uh, the tangent story. Or not the tangent, but your personal story, sure. right? Uh, mistakes made, right? The oh, earlier... Sure. Man, I could spend all day talking about mine. But I won't, because <laughs> we're, we're here to talk about Greg. So Greg uh, is the CEO of the Tangent Company, which is a water recycling i know i'm oversimplifying it and maybe even and maybe even getting it totally wrong but i think it involves water recycling you are correct for residential properties right for residential commercial oh and commercial yes okay we, we specialize in water and wastewater treatment systems right so in a nutshell the company was founded oh better part of a decade ago by a gentleman you may may not recognize the name bill Pryor. he was a visionary he was the gentleman that founded Connecticut. I was going to say, that name sounds very familiar to So me. no stranger to water treatment systems by any stretch. Uh, they were the inventors of the water softener that, that didn't require any type of electricity to operate. 
So he had a vision kind of in his back pocket in his mind's eye, even back in the Connecticut days. And he sold the company, oh, probably a little bit over a decade ago, and didn't want to retire. So he started Tangent and essentially spent about seven years doing research and development on a topic, big mouthful, direct potable reuse which is essentially a terminology for taking every waste stream that comes out of a building, could be a house, could be a commercial establishment, now not industrial, and taking that gray water, that black water, and converting it all the way back to potable water. So it's a closed loop water system for an establishment. It, I mean, when, so when I think about that, I think about all the um, environmental and arid, dry, problem parts of the globe that could really benefit from something like that right or am i oh you're you're right on the money is that right? absolutely i Do think you, long-term yeah. vision is it, there's a lot going on in the climate right now and whether you believe in climate change or whatever the attributes may happen to be just take a look at some of the data that's coming out of the agencies NOAA, nasa and you look at the water there's water tables that are being depleted on both sides of our continent here um, there's people that are living in deserts pretty much on every continent and you're going to struggle to find potable water. And potable water is a fancy term for drinking water, fresh water. If you look at the amount of water that's available on the planet, there's only 3% of that is, is fresh water. And a minuscule concentration of that 3% is actually available. A lot of it's tied up in the ice caps, icebergs, so it's frozen in different spots around the globe. But you start to, to drill down into that, and you got basically 30% is in groundwater. So the amount that's accessible to people to use on a daily basis is tiny, tiny, tiny. I mean, it's less than a percent. So this is a machine that gets hooked up to your water supply and cleans it out as it's running or no? Th think about it in terms of, um, say you want to build somewhere. You want to build somewhere remotely. Uh, you, you're going to need fresh water to drink, and then you need somewhere to send the waste water out of your establishment. So there's technologies that have been around for a very long time. You know, there's septic systems that do this in rural areas. Uh, you drill a well and get water out of the ground. There's some areas where you don't have access to a well, or maybe the well is too deep to make it economically viable to drill. So anyway, if you, if you look at this system, what it does is it closes the loop. You know, if you take an average household and you're going to use, there's different numbers that are out there, but if you say 120 gallons per capita, so per person living in a house uses roughly that much water, well, that water's got to come from somewhere. So, but if you had a technology in a system such as the water cycle, you close that loop, and we've got a process that's somewhere between 80 and 90 percent efficient right now, where you no longer have to have, say, 500 gallons coming into your house. You only need to top it off with 50, and then you're only losing 50 out the other side. So you're taking that water, purifying it all the way back around, and bringing it right back in the tap. So um, give us an idea of, to me, I it seems totally revolutionary. It doesn't seem like there's something like that that's out there now that's being used regularly by anyone. Or am I just not looking? Is this t as revolutionary as, as I think it is, or is it? I would say for the most part, yes, Alex. I mean, it's there's a finite amount of water on this planet, but for, I think, just reasons of ease of access, and those are starting to get fewer and farther between in the more challenged areas, like I alluded to before, uh, people just use water once. You use it, you send it away. You look at any municipal model, it's the same type of a technology. You got a municipal wastewater treatment facility, treats the water to an acceptable level. It goes back, could go back into a stream, could go back into the lake, like in our case. Then you have a drinking water treatment facility. It pulls water out of that same lake, takes it back in, purifies it back to drinking water standards, and disseminates it to all the different households. So that's great when you've got the access and the infrastructure. But in areas where you don't have that, why waste that water? Why take that water and just send it back out? Yeah. Purify it. Take the water out of that waste and reuse it. Our, our company makes water. You know who you guys should talk to? Tell me. Al Gore. Al! Huh? Have you guys talked to Al Gore? Had lunch with him yesterday. Stop it. No, but ser I'm serious, right? I mean, doesn't this jive with the, with, with the um, inconvenient truth? No, absolutely. Message? I mean, there's, right? there's a whole... Uh, part of the foundational principles of the company is sustainability. So... You have a resource, and the resource, I don't want to say it's being squandered, but it, it's not being optimized. Right. And I don't think we're out there to tell every household in America that they need a water cycle. Yeah. But there are certain areas that can definitely benefit from this type of technology, um, let so, alone globally. I mean, you start looking at some of the other areas or different operational aspects. I mean, you've got where you're doing operations in a desert. So um, 
you said it was it was founded by the um, the founder of Connecticut. Correct. A few years ago, and is the water? Uh, can you talk about where the water system is functioning today? Um, what, what's the current state of the market? Sure. No, absolutely. We've got several projects, several systems that are up and running right now. Uh, in fact, we're working on a system for um, a camp that's going in, actually here in Ohio. It's going to be a sustainability camp. And there's multiple systems that are going to go into this, this establishment where they're looking to bring kids in, adults in, basically with a focus around sustainability green initiatives. And are they going to work there? They're going to come there either through affiliation or summer programs or year-round well, we programs. We have one of those in Chagrin. We, Kelly's Working Well is a sustainable farm, so you may want to reach out to them. All right. Do we um, and they actually have a school now there. Where is that? It's right across the street. It's on South Franklin Circle, right across the street from the um, uh, cemetery. Hmm. And oh. you can go anytime. They have pets or not pets. And what do you do there? You, do you, you like work on the farm? They just built a school and like the students built it out of clay and um, they get banners from car dealerships. Oh, that's outstanding. You know, those big plastic banners that people throw away and that's like, that, that was the insulation for the school and yeah. Interesting. So I think Sorry. one of the, to, to answer your question even further, I mean, it, Tangent actually has, uh, I believe, uh, to the best of my knowledge, the, the longest running system that's out there from a direct potable reuse standpoint. Uh, we've got a system at the Western Reserve Land Conservancy, uh, which is not too far down the road from mm -hmm. us here. The system's been up and operating for just about four years, and they're drinking the water. So wow. It's, the reality is there, and there's there are sectors that are starting to realize this and look at it, but it's being done at... I would say an experimental level at this point. Mm -hmm. there's, there's jurisdictions across the country and even internationally where they're saying, look, we're, we've got water challenges. We need to start taking a hard look at this. Uh, to the best of my knowledge, I think we're the only organization out there that has a packaged system where we have a product for sale that's doing this. And we've got a demonstrated track record of, of having systems up and running. So, so, and you're the CEO there. Um, and you have been for a couple of years now. No, actually, not quite that long. Okay. It's coming up in about a half a year. Half a year. Yeah, that's I'm way off. My research that's okay. is terrible. <laughs> that's, um, that's, you're close. Uh, how big a company is it? Uh, we're we're a small. We're small and nimble at this point. Okay. Got it. And um, uh, before tangent, um, you start can we ask about the name? What, Where they got tangent? the name? I love that name. We got it from a fidget spinner. <laughs> a, a kid <laughs> throwing a tangent, and then they throwing a needed, tangent needed I a like fidget it. spinner. No, so, you can sure you can ask. I think it was the the name of the company was I think from many moons ago, back to when Bill was at uh, Connecticut, and he was a dreamer. He was a visionary person, and he had in his mind's eye this concept, and he invented a lot of different things over the years. And I think they just reserved this name, you know, legitimately so, or he's on another tangent. What, what's, what's the next project that, gotcha. that's, that's leading somewhere down the road that's going to be our next, you know, hit out of the ballpark? And, and the name stuck, so they kept it. Mm -hmm. So when he, uh, when he got out and disengaged from Connecticut, uh, he started tangent. Oh, see, I would have thought it was the tangent that the, wa the route takes, that the water takes, right? Instead of going the usual inflow, outflow, it's... In, oh, it's okay. inflow. You're, you're helping me on marketing. Yeah. Yeah. Right, Alex. Back yeah. inflow. You know what I mean? I like okay. it. I, th I, yeah, I mean, and that makes sense. Uh -huh. Tangent. It's like the water's taking a tangent from its usual route. Right. I like. So that. is it? A, I'm still confused. Is it an actual machine in your home? It, it is, is it a like, machine. It is a machine. It is a machine in the home. Is it like a water softener underneath machine, or is it like a? I'm not going to say any other business's name, but like a, a unit next to your sink machine. No, that's a great question, Molly. It's, it's kind of a combination. I mean, if you look at the process, there's, there's a part that goes outside of the home or outside of the building. Um, that's where essentially the biological processes are, are taking place. Or if you think of the analogy of, of a wastewater treatment plant, you're purifying the water out there, getting it back to a, a tertiary treated quality then that water will come back into an appliance. Now, that, it's flexible from a design standpoint, but the appliance could be in a house, could be in a garage, some kind of a, you know, a dwelling, or even a shed for all that matters. That's where it's taken back to the drinking water. So it goes through a whole myriad of, of treatment steps 
where it's purified back to uh, every time that we've checked it it's meets or exceeds u.s drinking water quality so do you need one if you have a well isn't the well already you know that's a great question i don't say i wouldn't say that you would need one if you have a well depending on the water quality of your well right and the supply capability of your well so there's a, there's certain circumstances where you may have access to water and if you've got a good water supply no you don't you don't need a water cycle um, if you've got a challenging application where maybe there's a limited amount or you can't just get enough of it out of the ground or what you're getting out of the ground is questionable you know it could be high iron high sulfates you've probably all smelled the, uh -huh. the well water where it's like ooh <laughs> yes yes so those app that's a potential application for it as well okay man I mean I can I don't know why um, uh, government US government or, or foreign governments wouldn't be all over you guys to get you into their more drier areas right That's um, on our radar screen yeah yeah <laughs> for sure well fortunately Molly knows a lot of world leaders yes. so Outstanding. She'll, yes. she'll make some introductions I thought I saw you at Gore's breakfast the other day yes. so. yeah. oh, yes. wouldn't be there but <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right. Ah, so, the political leanings are coming out. No, not allowed to talk about that here. That's one of our rules. Yeah. That and swearing. <laughs> well, we, uh, right. That, that, exactly. But um, water's for everybody. It doesn't well, have a, right. a political agenda. Water's equal opportunity. Yes. Yes. <laughs> it's uh, a necessity. So um, another interesting thing about Greg Molly yes. is that he started, uh, I think inadvertently, a... Um, like a business leaders group out of college. Am I saying oh, this okay. right? Yeah, for the most part, absolutely. <laughs> I just kind of stumble my way into No, no, that was a good segue. Keep uh, waiting for you to jump so in and say you're So full maybe of... Greg could share the truth with <laughs> yes. us. It probably wasn't inadvertently. It was more out of uh, frustration. Um, a couple of my colleagues when I was in business school, I'm a case, case alum, okay. uh, Weatherhead alumni, and two of my partners in crime there, uh, we actually went in together. We had a, a wonderful professor, um, rest his soul. He passed away this past year, uh, Richard Osborne. He taught the entrepreneurship classes for many years at Case. Essentially what happened is we, long story short, collaborated. He was on the board of several businesses. Um, my two colleagues and I put together a, a business plan to go in and you know buy a division of a local company that he had come in and lectured. And I'll spare you all the gory details and the drama, but essentially the deal didn't go through for reasons we can discuss over a, a tasty beverage some other time. It's because you didn't hire the Gertzberg Law Firm to do the deal. That, or, you know, but that's next probably time, it. Totally that's probably it. it. We'd have helped you. Totally Sorry. It. Go ahead. So <laughs> essentially we were out crying in our beers one night at Great Lakes Brewery, and we just had an epiphany. We're like, there's no way you can go in this town if you're an aspiring entrepreneur or somebody that wants to go go after the brass ring and not the gold key, where do you go to get advice? You don't go to Toastmasters. You don't go to other organizations. No offense to Toastmasters, but, I mean, there's there's not very many places where you can go and talk to people that have done it, walk the walk, maybe failed, maybe succeeded, maybe failed multiple times before they succeeded. So our epiphany resulted in this group, and we took it after our professor. Um, one of his, we named it the Gorilla Group. You're probably asking yourself, why the Gorilla Group? Yeah, that would be a one thing I'd ask. What he, what he did in his course was everybody had a call sign. So it was kind of the, the top gun-ish. So you, you went by your call sign. And right? yours Mine was? Mine was Glow Man. Glow Man. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Hey, wait, 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 wait. I, uh, did you pick Glow Man or did he pick Glow Man? I picked Glow Man. My initials are GLO. So oh, it, was, wow. it was fairly un unoriginal at the I thought point we were going to get like a... Uh, like a most embarrassing rave, moment? Like a rave story, you know? <laughs> like I used to really like those. got some sticks. highlights in us here. I thought maybe it was going to oh, go the I lights. The, I think it's the lighting. The lighting, <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's to okay. hide the gray. Uh, <laughs> preaching, so, preaching to the wrong choir. Molly, what would your call sign be if you were in Greg's uh, business class? Um, I, you know what it would be? Drew connector. Barrymore. <laughs> Drew, that's fitting. Don't you, you look, think she you looks look like, like Drew? Drew yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I like Maybe that. one or two pounds different, but okay. <laughs> you know what mine would be? Mine would be connector. Yours would be connector? Mm -hmm. That's a good one. Mm -hmm. mm. What would yours be? Papa Smurf. <laughs> Papa Smurf. <laughs> in, in Iraq, that's what that's what my People call sign was. You? Yeah. And, Papa uh, Smurf? Yeah, and my uh, my platoon sergeant was Rubber Ducky. <laughs> <laughs> 
That's I not don't... a lie. That's a de- that's Did dead on. Did you call each other that while yeah. fighting yeah, the well, enemy? Cause you, you can't, on the on the radio, you can't use sure. you know Lieutenant Gertzberg calling sure. Sergeant sure. you know Bachman. You said Papa Smurf. This is Robert Ducky. Oh over right. That and is uh, well, because we were convoy, we were we, it was convoy. Right. So yeah, this was this was convoy banter. Um, <laughs> and your CBs? Yeah. Well, no. Well, the, I mean, they were RT. Uh, There's some acronym. They were like CBs, but they were Army gotcha. radios. Anyway. So this was pre-internet, or about during the the birth of internet. I can just well. What's funny is that um, people I'm envisioning just used... all these people like trying to Google, you know, Generation X terms of what is a Smurf? Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, this was uh, 2003, um, okay. and I think that most of the most of the soldiers in our unit were of an age to remember the Smurfs. Um, some of the younger guys. I'm sure they just heard it from their parents, but they all knew what Rubber Ducky was. Sure. Anyway, we digress. We did. Uh, you were Glow Man. I was Glow Man, and his call sign was Gorilla. Okay. So that's that's what he called himself at every class. So we kind of named the organization after him. Oh. But the whole the whole mantra, the whole reason of this was to give that forum for you know would be and willing entrepreneurs to come and, and get guidance, get help. So we kicked this thing off, and it started off with you know. Two or three people getting a beer once a month, sitting down talking about business and whatever they were working on, to three to five, to 10 to 15, to 20 to 25. And this thing got legs and it took off. And, you know, the two other guys, Jeff and Don and I, you know, were trying to run this thing and we both had full time jobs and, you know, we're both involved in a whole bunch of other things, and you know, let alone, you know, grad school and everything else. So, it got bigger than us because you get stiffed a couple times at the bar for, you know, 35 people ordering drinks, you know, oh. $25 worth of stuff. They're paying in 20 bucks and at the end of the night, you're stuck with another $300 remainder. Oh <laughs> so, yeah. so we stood it up, incorporated it as a not-for-profit, put a board in place and basically oh, cool. stood the thing up as, as a business form. Is it still going? It's still going. Knock on wood. It's still going strong. How big um, is it? Last time I checked in, uh, it's probably about six, seven hundred members. Wow. wow. Now, they don't all show up at the same time. You'll kind of right. get a general meeting will go anywhere from 30 to 60, depending on who the guest drinker is. That's something I should probably clarify. No guest speakers, no PowerPoint. You come in, you know, you give your your spiel or your stick about who you are, why you're here, you know, what's your background, and then it just open form questions to whoever's there that day. And it's brutal questions. It's the stuff that people want to know. Yeah. You know, what did you do when you couldn't make payroll? What did you do when you found out there was something going on between your partner and you know, your, could be your wife or something? Right. We heard some crazy stories. And is it years. a dues-based group? Like it is people? now. Okay. Yeah, Are you on now. the board still or involved in some way? I am still tangentially, no pun intended, involved with it. But I, I pulled out when my my son was born, and I was chair for oh five or six years on and then the three of us kind of tagged in and out in those roles and stayed active and it just I had too many irons in the fire so I kind of said all right let's we'll, we'll pass the baton but I still keep the finger on the pulse uh-huh yeah. Very so that, cool. that seems like the kind of thing like what I was describing earlier about an iterative process that that grows each year that you have it so so you started it in 2001 Correct. approximately right mm-hmm. and, and with you, three people with three people That's right crazy. yeah and you eventually got to like a guest drinker role and you figured out that you need people to pay dues and you well, there were a work. lot of learnings along yeah. that way we had in the heyday i mean we had we had the gorilla group so incorporated it under north coast entrepreneurs as a not-for-profit 501c 513c then we took that entity and we kind of we had multiple divisions we had a for a short period of time we had kind of a guest lecture series piece that we tried to stand up that worked fairly well but not great uh, we had a radio show for several years. Really? Yeah, yeah wow. it, was, it was called Capitalist Cleveland. The The theme was all positive news-related story around business in Cleveland. So no flotsam, jetsam, tales of, you know, Britney Spears is dating and negative <laughs> connotations of business. It's what's happening, what's going well in the city. And we ran that for, oh... I want to say at least two years, maybe three years. And where did you run it at? That was, uh, I think it was on 850. Okay. It was an AM station, so okay. we, had a, we had a nice little cult following. But, uh, That's cool. It was neat. Uh, it was neat. Yeah, so here, can we do this? Like, so can we do a little mini lightning round of lessons learned from uh, meeting with group? entrepreneurs uh, from all walks of life for some number of years? 
Oh my lord. Yeah. I, so, I suppose I'll tentatively say yeah. yes. Well, we're going to do it. <laughs> we're going to do it anyway. I don't have a choice, right? Yeah. So here. Um, you always, all our guests always have a choice. No, not really. <laughs> so, okay, like, um, what, what, was, what was a recurring theme in terms of problems that entrepreneurs had that they would vocalize at these meetings? And, and what was the most common way to solve them? I think there was there were several reoccurring themes that we saw. I mean, there and there were a lot. We had a lot of really neat guest drinkers. Oh, the other piece, we, we had guests, uh, we had hot seats. So in addition, I'll answer your question in a second. We would have, <coughs> the hot seat was one of the the fledglings, shall we say, of, of the membership who, who was in the, engaged in the, in the ramp up of whatever their current business was. So that was the prelude to the guest drinker usually. We, we'll, we'll put them up on the podium. They get five minutes of glory to debrief the crowd and then pump the crowd for advice. I'm in my startup, I'm trying to figure out how to, you know, should I engage a law firm? Should I not engage a law firm? Some guy's trying to steal my IP. Should I fight him or should I just try and settle? You know, all kinds of things would come up. But uh, if I look back to your question, I mean, a lot of it comes around, you know, idea generation. Does somebody have a good idea? And a reoccurring theme is can you sell it? Mm. Are you selling it? There's a lot of times where people get caught up in, perfection the drive to making the perfect widget the perfect gadget and there is no perfect widget there is no perfect gadget you have to at some point you got to draw a line in the sand and say all right arm the torpedoes we're going and you take it out there and you focus on that and you sell it isn't that a a lot of fear that that not taking that next step i mean they have the product it's it's just that taking that next step Absolutely. And, and a lot of times what would happen is, you know, it's, it's skill set based, too. If you think about inventors and entrepreneurs, you know, and there's there's different iterations of them. But if you think in the product space, normally it's somebody who's a scientist or an engineer and they've got the, the next flux capacitor. And well, they know that thing inside and out. Right. But they may not be able to sell a, you know, a drowning right. man, a life preserver. Mm-hmm. And odds are they probably can't. So they focus on their wheelhouse. Well, what they may need to do is, you know, shift the investment, look somewhere else and say, hey, how do, how do I get somebody on board? Yeah, it's going to cost me a little bit more for six months but or a year or whatever the, the, the runway looks like. But, wow, that's going to get me. Yeah. There, there's um, this really good podcast, not as good as ours, but it's, uh, <laughs> it's called uh, Masters of Scale. Have you ever heard of it? No. It's uh, Reed no. Hoffman, who is one of the founders of LinkedIn. And each episode is an interview of some number of billionaire buddies of his, right? Like Zuckerberg or um, the lady from Yahoo, I forget her name. Um, But he picks a theme for them to talk about from when they scaled up, when they were growing. And one of them was getting your product out, right? Um, And Facebook, so the Facebook story is a great example of it because they use- I love him. Yeah. Well, they- (laughs) do. He, he, what he figured out was that he would um, use Facebook um, members, subscribers, what do you call us? People, people, users, Facebook users. Users, that's they're right. Um, to test out any cockamamie idea that they've got, right? But they wouldn't wait for it to be perfect, right? They wouldn't, they would just push it out. And so the fail forward fast concept is huge at Facebook. And then they, he brings on other people from other companies that talk about it. But um, that concept I keep seeing over and over again too. Can you sell it? Well, try, try to sell it, right? Don't wait for it to be perfect. But the other thing that that I was thinking as you were talking is how um, I think that entrepreneurs do have a problem. Um, I think a lot of us have ADHD, and one thing about ADHD, or maybe I'm just making this up, and I, I have no idea what I'm talking about, is that. Um, you have a flood of ideas that you think are all brilliant, right? And you stop being able to distinguish which ones will be will will have legs, right? So you either get paralyzed and and just keep trying to push each one a little bit more until it's perfect, or you push them out all at once and you don't focus enough. Um, so I wonder if you did you find those kinds of stories to to come up? You know, I, I think there. I know we've seen stories like that. Absolutely, I won't name names of, of companies, yeah. but I mean, there's. Oh, please I, do. No, no, no. <laughs> <of> drama. <laughs> no, but I think you got a very valid point, Alex. I mean, there. 
it's the inventor, right? The inventor is that the person that's generating new concepts. Right. You know, and then you got the consummate salesperson. It's just I don't care what it is, give it to me. I want to get it out there in front right. of everyone. And there's a shift too. If you look at you know what is the what is the world like in terms of a, a salesperson who's, who's coming after them? And I mean, there's I think there's times and places for the you know the high pressure sales group. There's there's times and places in a growing capacity for the yeah. the consultative salesperson where you're you know more and more. I, from my humble opinion, you know you're, you're you're trying to educate someone and help them to make their life easier or their company's life easier. And then that's, that's a much easier sell than trying to jam a product down somebody's throat. Um, what was your like biggest, um, something you saw come out of this group um, invention or something, somebody that moved on and, and finished their business and became a, a millionaire or any, there's any been a, Mark Zuckerberg moments in this group? There's been a couple. Um, Maybe not to Mark's status, but there have been a couple in the Did software. Did I say I love him? Just in case he's listening, I want him to know that. <laughs> You're sweating for some reason. I, know, I don't I know just what's love going him. on. Drew, what and happened? I don't <laughs> love him because of his look. I love him because of what he does. Yeah. You know, he could be a prick. He's got a lot of money, and he could be a I think a he jerk. was back in the day. I, I think so. Yeah. But think he just is, he's doing a lot. I think his wife helped him. Did I say I love him? You Okay, I want to make sure that's clear. Uh, all right, uh, you have a patent. <gasps> I do. You do have one. <laughs> and a member of the Cleveland Dragon Boat Association. Oh, absolutely. Which is that? That's not what you belong to. No, not yet. No, I. Mine is the Freedom Boat Club. <laughs> okay. Yeah, but what is the Cleveland Dragon Boat Association? The Cleveland Dragon Boat Association is the, is the heart and soul of dragon boating in Northeast Ohio. What's a dragon what is boat? dragon boat? What is dragon boat? Oh my gosh! Pull pull it up on your YouTube channel. There. Oh, well, now yeah. we're just just put in YouTube. Pull up dragon. Well, while boat we're doing that, boat. I need to know about the Glee Club. That's my favorite. Oh, all right. That's... You guys are digging deep. Ouch. Yeah, we have a great <laughs> dragon boat. That's exactly what I thought. It was. Picture a forty foot long oh. canoe. Oh. All right. I thought you... maybe it was. Right, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no, no. You're fine. It's like a forty foot long canoe, bench seats, and you sit two by two. And then you got a drummer in the front and a steersman in the back, and it's racing. So you basically everybody paddles in unison, and you race. The races are generally 250 meters, 500 meters. Sometimes even. Well, Dad, have to get one of these pictures up. Um, yeah. You guys uh-huh. need to come try it. I'm telling you. It's, and is it done at a certain time? Because I, I. There's a festival. You just missed it. It's probably two, two weeks ago, I think, oh, the really? Cleveland Festival. And they come into where? They come in, right? You you bring them in or no? It was right in. Uh, this year we did the festival out of Wendy Park. Years Where's past. Wendy Park. Wendy Park is right by Whiskey Island. You okay. know Whiskey Island is down okay. in the, mm-hmm. on the flats area. Years past they'd done it from. I was right in the Cuyahoga, and they did it from basically the Turn Basin out to Shooters. And that was a 500 meter course, so that was a pretty brutal run. Fun, but you know, definitely, uh, definitely physically challenging. Wow. Cool Why stuff. do I feel like this is really just an excuse to drink? I, oh, I, Alex, I, my, come on now. My, my <laughs> crazy. Drink while you're. I mean, Our, I would I mean, say afterwards, that you, afterwards. Okay. you deplete those electrolytes and carbohydrates. You have to replenish <laughs> after a race like that. I just right? feel like like. Uh, every one of these dragon boat guys is just getting wasted right as soon as you pull back <laughs> pull into the dock i don't know i i mean it seems like um like you could have been just a a, con, a a conventional traditional rower like do uh what is it called um crew crew, right. crew. but yeah. no no you said no i don't want to do crew i'm going to do dragon boating who's got my shots right that's right it's kind I, of it's for the bold <laughs> right? come on everybody does crew yeah that's what i'm saying all right Anyway, that's I'm telling you, right. it's addictive. So Glee Club, We're how just many years? That's so cool. Oh yeah. my gosh, so you're gonna go back to my singing days. Yeah, I sang all through high school. I was in Men Are Top 25. Oh, um, that's a big deal. Yeah, well, not as cool <laughs> as the LC singers, but whatever. Uh, <laughs> very good. I was in Glee Club and a couple of other choirs and the, the chorale at Ohio State. Now, Glee Club was great. And does the Glee Club have an alumni? They do. They have an alumni association. Are you a part of that? I am a part of that. I might need to talk because I know the Documentary Film Festival has a film about a Glee Club and they're trying to, they're bringing in, I know Kent is coming. Okay. Kent Glee Club, but maybe we can um, get some OSU alum. Absolutely. I'm uh, sure we can help fun. you out there. Okay. Yeah. Can we do the lightning round now, Molly? Is uh, that, is you that know cool? what? I'm on your schedule. Do you have any other tangents you want to go down? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm good. Thank you. Thank you for respecting All right. me. Ready? I, ready as I'll ever be. How's that sound? All right, Greg. It's not scary. 
biggest success? Biggest success? Other than being on this podcast. Oh, no. All right, well. Take this. Cross that one off. Next biggest success. And it can't no. be children. I, we didn't get into his personal life, but we don't allow that because we know if you do have children, that would be one of your biggest right. successes. I can give you obligatory on you know, my, my, my family and all that. No, but I, to me, life's a journey. I mean, I, I truly, you know, I, I've been making a definitive attempt at trying to live in the moment and live in the day. So I think it's very easy to get caught up in, in the day-to-day routines and then you start to just blink and days go by and weeks go by and you, f- you forget that that childhood mentality of being able to just enjoy the moment so for me i don't think the biggest success has happened yet mm-hmm. oh i love that answer uh biggest failure defining failure any way you want to define it learning experience bump in the road massive failure <laughs> oh <laughs> man there's a there's it. a lot of them now <laughs> i can think of it um I can, I can tell you one that was probably a cathartic moment for me. I mean, I, I always share this with people. Um, I, I started out as a mechanical engineer at Ohio State. And I got like three years, I think it was three and a half years through the program. And I just, you know, you're in the in the, the slog and the grog. And but I was doing other stuff. I was obviously I was singing in the glee club and taking other courses. And I just, it, you just have that, that, that spidey sense that it's not really resonating. You're not really into it. And ultimately why I ended up switching to environmental engineering, environmental science. Uh, but long story short, I, I had a class and I can't remember it was dynamics or one of the, you know, the later in the period, harder core engineering courses. And I think the topic was a dynamic topic. And I, t- I bombed a test, just bombed it. And it was one of these, you know, engineering was very, you know, it's like a 30 point test. So if you screw something up in one question, it's like, it was a three question test. So I think I got partial credit on like one of the questions. I just totally <laughs> tanked the rest of them. And I just, I, I'm like, all right, something didn't click in this exercise. And I went and I talked to the professor and she talked to me and she said, you know, and I said, she said, well, explain to me how you were approaching this problem. And I, and I did, I said, well, I'm looking at this. And I think it was a, some kind of a, like a roller coaster design or a bridge trust network. It's one of these horrible things where you've got 2 million little PC parts that are all engaging and torques are going one and the other. And I said, well, I'm looking. First thing I do is I sit down and I look at it and I, I think, okay, well, if this is pushing here and that's pulling there, it's going to kind of create this effect. And I'm trying to logic through it. And she just looks at me and she goes, that's wrong. Just do the math. <laughs> and, and, you know, and maybe it was prophetic words from her standpoint, but it was just kind of rang so hollow to me. I'm, I'm almost thinking, well, did you design O-rings for NASA at a certain point in time? Just do the math and everything's going to work out fine. So anyway, I, just, I had this cathartic moment like, you know, I got to find something else. So I took a a hiatus and I went and I didn't leave college but I mean I, I went and I picked a whole different track record so I started taking stuff that interested me I I'm sure your parents were thrilled about that well they, if I'd gone off the rails they probably would have freaked out but I ended up taking stuff that was interesting and I'm a geek so I, mean, I took organic chemistry and biochem and some other things and ended up kind of at that point in time running a curriculum that was very close to an emerging program at Ohio State which was their engineering program for environmental but it was run out of the agricultural school it wasn't run out of the school of engineering so anyway long story short it was it was one of those things I totally tanked and bombed it but it it's shifted my life in a different direction and uh huh maybe a piece of why I ended up where I am today so yeah no that I, I like the way you define failure that that way yeah it I mean that it but for that failure you could be potentially in a career that made you miserable right? <laughs> it's filled with a lot of other failures uh Molly you have a question for Greg Thank you, Alex. Thank you, Molly. Um, so a influential female uh, in your life, somebody that really helped you become who you are. I've been a lot. My gosh. Uh, influential females. Um, obviously, I've got uh, my mom is one of them. My, my, my grandmother was one. Um, I think even my great step-grandmother right now is one that she might not know it as much as she is great stepmother great great step-grandmother grandmother wow yeah. she's 97 still sharp I as a tag just ask how old wow step grandmother I don't great think grandmother yeah it was my grand my grandfather's wife because my grandmother on my father's side died the year to the day before that i was born earlier so okay Anyway, mm. so too much uh, fame of the wow. to figure out there. But uh, you're very speaking of being in the moment. You're very lucky to 
to have a step or not I, I uh, to have a great grandmother still alive at our age. Oh, absolutely! That's I mean, amazing. It's, yeah. Was that his trophy wife? Was no, it the second time it was, around? It was his second wife because the first one passed away. Okay. You know, so my, my grandmother, I never got to meet her. I mean, she, my dad's mom, she passed away November twenty fourth, okay. the year before I was born, and uh, wow. Yeah. So crazy stuff. But I mean, yeah. it, um, but there were some teachers too. So I mean, I can the list goes on. There's been a lot of women that I really have done a lot. Several teachers I could. I could First grade teacher, Julie Siegel, and there was another one that was influential. Sixth grade teacher was Pam Richmond. I mean, she was she was probably one of the ones that turned my thoughts around math around. Um, never a big fan of math. A lot of little boys aren't, right? You know, you're kind of, ah, this, why do I have to need to know this? But she had a gift for kind of spinning people in and, and, and guiding them through. Wow, I could have used, I could have used her <laughs> spin. <laughs> And that was all through the Menor School. Did you always live in Menor? No, well, that wasn't through Menor. Those those two were through Phillips School, okay. which was out. At that point in time, it was in Lake Erie College's campus. Uh huh. Uh huh. I think now I it's know exactly where. was Phillips Osborne. I think now it's Andrews Phillips. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, all right, Greg. Most importantly, embarrassing story or event in your life that no one knows. That no one knows. A tree falls in the forest. Do I have to disclose it? Yes. I mean, come yes, on, come on. This is brutal. You're not allowed to leave. Oh, come on, there's got to be some glee club moments. Oh, man. I, I, I can't, I can't divulge most of those glee club uh -oh. moments. Uh -oh. <laughs> or, or dragon boat moments. It could be anything. Oh, my gosh. I'm trying to think. Man, um, if you put a glee club guy into a dragon boat, we did. crazy, crazy things okay, happen. It, it gets medieval. I'm yeah. Uh -huh. it. It's crazy. <laughs> Dog sleeping with cats. It's, it's crazy. It's, 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 it's crazy. That's hysteria. I could, oh, boy. Um, I had one time back in college. I was I had come back. I think I came back for an exam. And it was like finals week, and I was just spent. So I came in, went in the room. Nobody's home in the dorm room. We had like four guys living together, the typical dorm room. So I came in, and one thing I loved about the dorm we were in is a great water pressure. You know, just <laughs> so you just sit in there and you could just crank up the hot water. You're not paying the bill, right? You just sit in there and decompress and relax. So I was in there for like a half hour, taking a nice hot shower. Didn't bring anything to change into in the bathroom. Nobody was home, so I, you know, shut the shower off, got out of the shower, grabbed a towel, opened oh, the door, started boy. to walk out. My roommates had a study group in the room, so I walk uh -huh. out like <laughs> pretty much close to Stark naked, right in front of a bottle. There's probably about eight people jammed into this little closet-sized space. But uh. <laughs> nice, nice. That's a good one. Somebody, uh, somebody else is doing a podcast right now. Going, I know that guy. <laughs> he walked <laughs> into my dorm I was room. There. <laughs> yes, yes. Before the days of cameras on phones, right. thank God. Thank right. God, right? Thank God. <laughs> All right. Well. Uh, this has been awesome. Um, what what are we working on? What what's what's current? What's new? What do you want people to know? Oh my gosh! I think from a, from a tangent standpoint, Anything. we're we're on the cusp of some great things at Tangent. I mean, they're we're rolling out the product. The water cycle is going out there. I mean, it's it's an exciting time. I really think the water space is just going to strongly emerge over the next you know two to five years you're going to see this stuff start to pick up at a rapid pace so you know, okay. got, like i said we've got several pilots that are out there systems are going out it's exciting good stuff yeah molly are you uh do you have any announcements that you'd like to put out to our seventy-five thousand listeners well mark your calendars for october 3rd through the 8th for the chagrin documentary film festival october 3rd Always. through the 8th and it's then going september down. i hope I hope this will be out there. September 10th through the 16th is a uh, salute to our first responders event. Oh, nice. So um, you can uh, actually right now, I just got the text. We just delivered the mailbox will be in the village here. So people can write thank you notes and drop them in the mailbox in the village. And um, uh, the Kenston game this weekend and the Chagrin game on the 22nd will be honoring them. They'll walk out the um, the men in uniform, the first responders, and then a big concert on the 10th, September 10th, at the Chagrin Valley Little Theater, summoned to the heroes. First responders and residents are all invited to come if it's free um, and honor our first responders. You guys did a really good job with that last year. I went to that, and so you had it at Solon. The, it was Kenson, but right. slash Solon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's, and it's then. Moving. 
Oh, t- 75, arranged 75 dinners. Well, oh, wow. breakfast, lunch, or dinner. So each one of our 13 will get um, some sort of meal in some way uh, during that whole week. And what about you? October 18th, our very own Meg Pawkin yes. will be giving a, um, a talk at 5.30 at the Lantern. Yes. About elder I care. know that place. You do know that place. Your dad lives there. He does. He loves it there. He loves it there. It's, yeah. ama- it's an amazing. It is an amazing If you have place. not gone to see it, have you gone to see it, Greg the Lantern? No. It's a new facility on 306. Assisted living facility. I'll go check it uh, it's mind blowing. It's absolutely. Right. Gene, Gene Makesh. What? Makesh. Makesh, I always yeah. say it wrong, is the owner, a brilliant man. He was a, an early guest on our podcast. Yeah, yeah. and it's like 1940s. Yeah. It looks like a. A downtown of 1940s. It looks like Main all, Street. Yeah. Yeah. Main, it, it, it's oh, it amazing. Sounds neat. It's amazing. They have open houses all the time. Or you can just go in or you can text me and I'll bring you in and to, my dad can tour you through it. Yeah. And it you re- went without me. That was a little devastating <laughs> to me. But um, Well, I'll go with you on October 18th at 5.30. But you also have a nonprofit something or other coming up. Yeah, that's up coming up. So, Is yeah, it full? I, I've got a feeling that this will come out oh, after September you. 12th but i will tell you uh that um by the time you're listening to this we will have had an awesome nonprofit seminar on september 12th at the idea center downtown perfect i really um, want to go and i don't think i can for some reason oh, you're what going. day is it you're a nonprofit. how can you not go you i gotta know go. i know but there's something yeah. on greg tell all your nonprofit friends I september 12th it's uh from 11 30 till 2 and we're and edwin's is uh serving lunch and we're going to do um, a talk on crowdfunding. Uh, it's called Brave New World. So that's September 12th. Um, it made me think of Aladdin when I read that Crowdfunding. Title. Edwins? Yeah, crowdfunding no. in, the non, in, in the nonprofit Probably fundraising the non-profit. context. It's, ama- it, it's, it's an amazing and, and highly underutilized concept. Sure. So we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about um, what happens when volunteers and employees screw up mm. or misbehave. Mm. Um, and, and how a nonprofit should prevent that or react to it. And then there's going to be a panel discussion on strategic planning. And we've got some heavy hitters coming for that. But that will have happened by the time you yes. listen to this. And I can tell you, it was awesome. But you know what will not have happened is the Documentary Film Festival. And Edwin's has a documentary. Is that right? There's a documentary film festival by, I can't think of, he's actually in my category. Um, and he is a he has an Emmy. He's an Emmy Ooh, winning wow. director. Yeah, you gotta be. Um, but but he, it's about Edwin's. You're gonna get yeah, you're all famous on us, Molly. Um, have you guys talked to anybody that's done crowdfunding yet? Yeah. Had, had an interview with it or anything? Or? Oh, on the on the uh, podcast. Yeah. Um, I don't. Well, I know that our very first guest, Jeff Hoffman, is involved in um, some pretty interesting crowdfunding projects right now. Okay. Um, so He's the co-founder of Price Sure. Line. No, I know yeah. Jeff. And I'm him at the Erie Hack this year, so is it? I mean, I, I'm guessing... We should get Jeff Hoffman on a boat, on a dragon boat. Well, he'd probably do it. I'm sure he would. I want to go on a dragon boat. Come on. You get an open invitation. I'm bringing you guys yeah? Down. Yeah. Don't say that, Greg. Yeah. I'm going. Come on. Go. Come on down. Come on down. Um, Season's not done yet. So uh, October 18th is the, uh, the Lantern event, 5.30. And basically what it is is Meg is going to talk to folks about um, taking care of their parents, their aging parents. Um, and she's going to talk about charitable foundations and, and leaving legacies and um, lots of estate planning and trust discussions that uh, I'm not smart enough to have. Um, and you'll get to see the lantern, which is amazing. Uh, for it's and my dad, just go there for for that, and then you'll get this. See Doctor Vichy. Hear, Ask for Doctor Joe. Right. You see Molly's dad. Don't yes. And to be clear for everyone, it's, it's although I never use the word step, but because I did mention in here that my dad passed away at seventy four, <laughs> people are going to be like, "What's going on here?" Thank you for clearing that up. You're welcome, Alex. I'm only here for you. <laughs> Anything else we want to talk about for the good of the I order? I think so. I off? can't wait to go home and play with my fidgets, though. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised I didn't play with it during our podcast. Um, you play with your fidget to your little heart's content. Oh, you're Molly. always playing with yours. Why can't I play with mine? 
When you All play right. with your fidget spinners, think of tangent. There you go. <laughs> Thanks, everyone, for listening. We'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye. Bye.